started, so yeah, yeah. I love that we can use the media, but I, I, I just have to stay focused. And does that make sense? Like, th thank you, welcome Facebook, right? Thank you, Lord. I'm just gonna open up in prayer, Father. We love you. We bless you. <coughs> As Pastor Kira said, we crown you the king of the kingdom, Jesus. Father, I just ask, Lord, that, that we would be open to you. I am open to you. Your body is open to you. Speak to us, Lord. Steer us up, God, in the ways of remembrance, Lord. May we obey your word. May, may we hear you clearer. May we... Know when you are moving us and, and, and leading us and guiding us. And may we know when you are telling us to go and when you are telling us to stop. When we need to be intentional with a certain relationship, God. May, may we be in tune with the Holy Spirit. The great gift, the great God in us, God. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord Jesus, in this service, Lord, from the children to the adults, God. We all need you. And we just bow to you, the King of the kingdom, King Jesus. And Father, we thank you for what you have done thus far in us, in this nation, and the nations abroad. We thank you, Lord Jesus. For what you have done in Africa, God. And we, we put a praise and we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Amen. I have a few questions I really want to, to share with you this morning. Holy Spirit really, really gave me these few questions. And not just, I don't just want you to hear it right now in this moment, but I want you to think about it. I want you to meditate it on it this week and be intentional with these questions. This one is for me. These questions are for me and these questions are for you. What is God saying to you? What is he saying to you? Is he saying to me, how is he speaking to you? How is he speaking to you? And your pastor just wants to just elaborate on that a little bit for you to be mindful of, of how he's speaking. And third question, can you hear him? Can you hear him? So question one. What is God saying to you? How is he speaking to you? And can you hear him? And I just, I want, I want to say, um, just a, a, as these questions are coming forth, it's like, so, you know, what is God saying to you? How is he speaking to you? How can you hear him? Oh, and, and I, I just had this, 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 this was just brandy. It's like, or are the opinions or, or others' voices, circumstances, speaking louder, speaking louder. So I challenge you to really take this before the Lord. Take this in your quiet place to, 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 to ask yourself these questions. Let's go to John 10. Church, let's go to John 10. John chapter 10. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the word of God. So John 10, we'll start at verse 7. And in my Bible it says, Jesus the good shepherd. And e even saying that, Pastor Tara has a, 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 a shepherd staff and... The kids had really been stirred up. One of, one of them, uh, Eugene, wanted the full armor of God. We, we have bought that full armor of God. This is probably the third one we've had. But Eugene wanted another one. So guess what? 
we got another full armor of God. But the other the other day, uh, Emmy got it, and then one of the kids, they're running around with a shepherd's staff. I'm like, put your daddy's shepherd's staff up. So, Pastor, if you see it, we, we got it tucked away, okay? But Jesus, the good shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd. In verse 7, we're going to start verse 7. Then Jesus said it to them again. Most assuredly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. You hear that? I want, I want us to really see what that says, okay? Verse 8, all who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Verse 9, I am the door if anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. In church, I, I want I want to I, I want to just just say I forgot to say this when I started reading. This is written in red. Don't we love when it's written in red? Our Jesus spoke this, so we need to really stop and and hear what is our shepherd speaking to us. Verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. You hear that church? Jesus laid it down for us, his sheep. But a hireling, verse 12, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. Verse 13, the hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. That's not our God, thank the Lord. Verse 14, I am... The good shepherd, Jesus. And I know my sheep and am known by my own. You hear that? You hear that? Us, his children, hear his voice and we know him. And we have to be sure we're not following the hireling. Because the hireling, when things get rough, when the wolf comes, will not be there. But, but church, we have a God that is with us. That stands closer than a brother. That, that when the wolf comes, we got the word. We've got what he says. Amen. But church, y'all got to know who you listen to this week. Who you believe in. Amen. We got to be in tune to what Jesus said, what God said, and not just like the, the voices of opinions, the voices of your friends. Make sure that it's Jesus speaking. Make sure the voices that you are hearing are, are Jesus. So if you're talking to, to whoever and you're listening to stuff, we got to be in tune to what is our shepherd saying this week. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, we want to hear you, Good Shepherd. We want to be in tune with you, Good Shepherd. In any way, Lord, that we've listened to the hireling, God, forgive us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So listen, verse 13. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd and I know my sheep and am known by my own. Very important, church. Very important. Who are we listening to? Who are we following? Who are we meditating on? Verse 15. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Doesn't that make you happy? Doesn't that make you thankful that our God had it all, had all, and He brought His life, He, excuse me, He laid His life down for us. All humanity is looking for that kind of love. What am I, I, this is especially for my ladies, but when I'm out and about and I'm ministering, I love to talk to the ladies because it's like, you know, 
when you're looking for love in all the wrong places, you're really looking for somebody that laid his life down. Well, I have good news. Our Jesus, the good shepherd, laid it down for us. And I'm telling you, when I tell that to the ladies, and the men too, but I'm a woman. I really like to minister to the hearts of the women when I'm out there. And I say, girl, you want to know about this man that laid down his life for you? And it makes them happy. I see joy rising up in them. Amen. And when I tell them about the love of Jesus and I remind them that this man Jesus laid down his all for you their, their countenance changes amen thank you Lord so again verse 15 as the father knows me even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep and other sheep I have which are not of this fold them also I must bring and they will hear my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd Verse 17, therefore my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Listen to this. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my father. Therefore there was a division among the Jews because of these sayings, and many of them said, He has a demon and is mad. Why do you listen to him? While others said, These are not the words of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? Listen to this, 22. The shepherd knows his sheep is what mine's titled. Now it was the feast of dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter, and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch, then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long do you keep us in doubt? If you're the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. Verse 27, hear it, hear it again. My sheep hear my voice and I know them, and they follow me. Very important. That's the, I, I know we read a lot. I just, I get so excited in this word. The Lord gives me points, and I, I go to prepare, and it's like, Lord, I, I got to keep reading. I got to read this, and I got to read that. But the point, and, and, and just what I really want is, is verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and he knows them. I know them, and they follow me. Amen. So it's like, it's so important that we hear and know God's voice. That we hear and know God's voice and what he's saying to us. And to be obedient, church, as he says, and, and the sheep follow him. Amen. So I just, again, what is God saying to you? How is he speaking to you? And can you hear him? Okay, and I, I, I love it. Y'all know we talk a lot about Mama Ruth, Sister Ruth, right? And I love when the Lord reminds me of the things she said, and I just wrote it down. She'd say this all the time. She, she'd shake that finger and she'd say, Brandy, you got to know God for yourself. It's like, yes, I sat under her and I honored God in her and passed her the same, but she kept leading us to Jesus, church. And that's what is so important, children of God, that we stay in this word and you know him for yourself. Because listen, when that hireling comes and starts talking to you, you can spot the counterfeit. You can spot the spot. No, -uh, that ain't God. Because look, what does the word teach us, guys? Even the elect will be drawn away. Amen. We got to know what, it, what, what his word says and know it well. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But, yeah, Mama Ruth, you got to know God for yourself. And she'd shriek that. I'm telling you, that was the mightiest woman that I've ever met. You know, I'm not saying, I know there's mighty women, but in my life, that woman was mighty and you hear a hundred years you think oh no -uh. i'm talking she was as strong like she was so strong but I, I love that that yes she gave us counsel and she taught us this word but she would always say even when she gave us words and stuff know god for yourself hear what god is saying to you brandy you take that and you pray about it and you hear what god is speaking to you so again what is god saying to you how is he speaking to you? And can you hear him?
I want to go to Joshua 1.8. Joshua 1.8. Just, I, I just have a few points that I want to discuss. And the first one is to get into this word. To get into this word. So Joshua 1.8. And y'all, y'all know your pastor's faith. One of one of the favorite things about Jesus is that He never leaves us and never forsakes us. Amen. But that that's not that's not where I want to go with this. But it it it's it's in the in the text. So one eight. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Listen to this. this, Listen to this. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. You hear that meditating in that word day and night, doing what it says to do. And when we do that, we, let, let let me say it exactly what the word says. For then you will make your way prosperous, then you will have good success. Raise your hand if you want to be prosperous. <laughs> I'll raise my feet too, please believe me. <laughs> and have good success. Everybody wants that, right? Yeah. I mean, we want to be prosperous. We want to have good success. It's so important that we stay and get into this word. Amen. And let's go to Psalms 119. Psalms 119. I'd love to read the whole thing, but we ain't doing it. My Bible is titled, Meditations of the Excellencies of the Word of God. We are going to read 1 through 6. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His testimonies, who seek Him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. How do you know his ways getting in this word? We got to know the word of God, the ways of God. And in, in, in that, when, when stuff happens, how are we going to respond? We need to know this word. Verse 3, they walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statues. That's us, church, to walk in his statues, the ways of God. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. Go down to verse 11. Your word I've hidden in my heart, O God, that I might not sin against you. Verse 15. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. Verse 16. I will delight myself in your statues. I will not Forget your word. The word, the word, the word. We need this word. Not people's opinions. Not all that. Y'all get all that. We need the word of God. We need the word of God, church. We're standing and believing God at his word. Not not, not anything else. But what does the word say about that? I just... I, we're steering each other up right now, right? You're just, but I'm steering myself up. What does the word say? We're going to stand and believe God at his word. Amen. Can I get a witness up in this house? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So the importance of getting in this word, getting in this word. So again, when those voices start speaking and you're starting to think about and take note in those three questions, it's like, if it don't line up with this, quit listening to it. If it don't line up with this, get up out of here. For it is written, that's what Jesus did when that enemy tempted him three times, right? He didn't come back with, uh, 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 well, so-and-so said, Sister Sue said, opinions. Well, you know, I'm really feeling this way, okay? He came back with the word of God. It is written. It is written. Amen? So the importance, church, and I know even preparing this, I felt like it was a little elementary. But you know what? Sometimes we need to get back to just just basic principles and remind one another, right? And, and, and to walk this thing out, okay? Walk this thing. How are we going to walk in victory? 
How are we going to walk in victory? We're going to stay in this word. We're going to stay in this word. And if our, if if we, you know, when we're in our relationships and our sister's struggling, we can talk and we can hear, but we take them back to the word, not our opinions, right? But the word. What's the sister? What's the what's the word say about it? Yeah, I'm struggling. Yeah, I'm missing my man a little bit right now. But what's the word say? Can you can you encourage me with the word? Okay. Yeah. Amen. I'm just I'm just making it plain. Y'all know I'm missing my man. But I bless that man in the name of Jesus. And I know he is doing what God's called him to do. But even in my moments, in my kids' moments, when we're missing daddy, what do we do? We take it to the word. We take it to the word. Right? Thank the Lord. Yeah. Thank God. I, I have to tell I love you guys. I bless y'all. I thank God for this body. I, I, I am I am I am ever grateful for y'all. Truly. That's a side note, that wasn't in my notes. <laughs> Alright, so again, getting into this word. Oh well, well you know what? It flow it, it is flowing with my second point was the importance of our relationships. Our importance of our relationships, other believers, other other like-minded people that want to grow in the Word, that want to believe the Word, that want to do this thing Jesus way. So number two, just the importance of other believers, right? So the, those three questions, you know, that 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 I shared with y'all. I'm gonna go over them again. What is God saying to you? How's He speaking to you? And can you hear Him? So I just. You know, just talking about the importance of the Word of God. The importance of the Word of God. And lining up all those questions with what's the Word say. But number two, other believers and our importance of relationships. Our importance to staying connected to every, you know, to other believers. I want to go to Hebrews 10, 23 and 25. Hebrews 10, 23 and 25. When you're there, say amen. amen. Okay, we ready? Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. That was our that was our thing last week, the faithfulness of our God. But let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Verse 25. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some, but exhorting one another as... And so much the more as you see the day approaching. But do you see that? Let us consider one another to steer one another up in love and good works. Not forsaken getting together. Not forsaken assembling together. It is so important. Our times together is so important that we steer one another up. That we're there for one another. And not just on Wednesday and Sunday church. But like those prayer calls that we do. And just staying connected. You know. Even I was so encouraged yesterday just with us all gathered with the Malachi Project. And getting to be together. You know. And just the importance of our relationships. The importance of us when 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 one when when one of us are on another's mind to text to to send, send that message. You know we don't know that our sister our brother needs that. But I'm telling you, I I, I love to to hear from everybody during the week. The importance of us staying connected. The importance of our relationships with one another. This is one of my favorite verses. I want to go to. I share this a good bit. I do. I. I do. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Excuse me, I'm having a hard time finding it. Excuse me, I, I, I gotta. Pastor, 
Look, I'm getting red faced. Some, sometimes when I'm up here, I get a little nervous. But hey, you know what? Do it anyway. <laughs> Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. And be honest. When Amen. I was when I was a little girl, I'd get I'd get nervous in class, and my face would get as red as Anne Marie's dress. She's not in here. And then my friends would say, "Oh, Brandy, why are you so red?" <laughs> All right, we ready? All right, I'm ready too. Thank God. Thank God. All right, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep one warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. That is one of my favorite verses, church, because this is the thing. Y'all know the Malachi Project logo, the, the hand reaching down, grabbing the other hand. T Pastor Terrell was given that when he was in the prison. And the point is, is the hand of God reached down and grabbed that man of God out of his mess and gave him that vision that he would do the same and help others do the same. But I, I need y'all to hear this. I need y'all to hear this. this. This is one of my favorite just just examples of relationship because this is the thing. There are times I need you to help me up and there are times I'm going to help you up and we need to be intentional and not be afraid and ashamed to say, hey, look, I'm struggling. I need a little help today. Okay? Because to think I hadn't missed my, my best friend while he's been gone would be not the truth. But I'm telling you, when I was struggling, I reached out to my prayer partner and I just I just said real quick, will, will you please pray? I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm telling you, in 15 minutes, that thing popped up off of me. And But 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 do you say the importance of, t of talking to somebody? It's okay to be struggling. It's okay to be a little overwhelmed. We ain't going to stay there. We're going to help each other out. And not be... But, but, but to know... You ain't always got to be the one pulling, right? But when you need to pull somebody up, be ready to pull them up. Amen? Amen. And when you need to be pulled up out to, to have a voice and say, Hey, look, help me. Pray with me. There is something that happens when, when you lay the pride down and you ask for help. Truly, when, when I did that to her, and I feel like that the Lord used it for me, because as soon as I just sent that little, it was a one, it was one sentence. But as soon, and, and, and let me, let me just, and I, 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 I cried a little bit, had me, had me some time in my quiet place. But it's, it was 15 minutes, and that thing was up off of me. Be encouraged, church. We need one another. God created us that way. Amen. Amen. And I, again, thank you for having my back. And covering me and the children and, and, and pastor. I have felt it tangibly. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's read it one more time. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. We just want to stop right there and say, thank you, Lord, that you put us in a body that we can help one another, and that we will help one another. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Meditating on the Word of God, our fellowship with others, and I want to leave us with this. I want to leave us with this. Just the importance of James 1.19. Let's go to James 1.19. Y'all know we love the word in this house. We love the word in this house. And we're going to obey what this word says. James 1.19 So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 
again, this is one of those, this really ain't my point, but it was too good not to, not to go ahead and read it while we're in the text. <laughs> Quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Verse 21, this is really what I want to talk to you all about, but that, that was just too good to steer us up in, right? 21, therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Verse 22, this is it, this is it. We talk about the importance of the word, the importance of the word, getting in the word, but listen what we got to do with this word. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Again, all hands raised in the building. We all want to be blessed. We all want to be prosperous. Amen. Well, what are we going to do about that church? We are going to get into this word. We're going to obey this word. We're going to follow Jesus and his word. And we're going to be doers of the word. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Can I get an amen? amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just decree and declare over this house that we will not be forgetful hearers, but we will be doers of this word. And as you and as me goes out this week, that people will see the Jesus in us. Amen. That we will stop for the one and we will be intentional about the relationships. I got to tell you a testimony. Y'all know this. My internet's been out for almost two weeks. It has been an event. Y'all can see all over the Google that AT&T is on a strike and it's, it's causing some folks some problems, okay? But let me tell you this testimony. Listen to this, Vanessa. She, she heard it. I have had issue after issue after issue with this Internet. It's been insane, right? And I'm not, I, that's not the point. But I want y'all to know just the, the journey with the internet. So my equipment showed up the other day. Me, the, me and the kids was happy. We sat down in this floor. We was about to hook it up. And so I, I get my phone and I go through the steps. Well, the step says, um, now keep in mind, at this point, it had been a week and a half. And Vanessa's having a hard time work. Like, we're, we're some difficult stuff happening. Again, that's not the point. Hear the point. So we get the we get our new box. We sit in the floor. We're all happy. We was having us a praise party up in here, right? <laughs> and I get to the next step, and it says, "Look for the cable connection, and hook up your new equipment to the cable connection." Well. This house ain't got no cable connection. My old internet didn't have no cable connection. So I'm like, I can't do anymore. So I get on my phone. I'm trying to get a live person, trying to get, I'm chatting with somebody, right? And at this point, I am like, help me, Lord. Help me, God, okay? You know, I just, I'm just being real, just being honest. I didn't get, I didn't get crazy with, but it was just, it's just been frustrating with the internet, and, and we thought we had it. We thought we was in, at the end of the wait. Well, we wasn't. So I'm, I'm talking to somebody on the live chat. The man guarantees me somebody, a technician will be out tomorrow between 20, 10 and 12, and you'll get a credit on your account. So I'm like, okay, you make happy customer. You make happy customer. Technician will be out tomorrow. I'm going to get me a credit. Okay. All right? So happy 10 to 12 the next day I'm waiting. We're like, we're getting our internet. Well, I get a text. Your appointment is for September the 9th between 10 and 12. Okay. The man lied to me. Okay. And I get somebody on the phone. Y'all hear this. Hear this. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere with this story. I get somebody on the phone. And I sat down, I had it on speaker, Vanessa's working in there with her hot spot because we're having to do what we need to do to still get our work done without the internet. And not stopping at that, we ain't grumbling and complaining. I'm making a point. 
I'm sitting at the table. I'm talking to this lady. She's from the Philippines. Talking to her. I was very direct. Your pastor was being very direct. Ma'am, this is costing me. This is costing me time, money. It's affecting my business. Well, we can't work and stuff. It, it's affecting things. But I was very direct, very kind, but being direct. Like, and your your the employee lied to me, and the technician didn't show up on the time he was supposed to. And I read her exactly what he said back to me. She can see it too on her end, right? So, but I was just being very direct to her. Next thing you know, I'm ministering Jesus to this woman. I and it's like I truly it's like I, I'm not sure how we even got there. We, we're talking about the children, and somehow I said to her, I'm saying, yeah, I have five kids, and da 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 da. And she's like, oh, five kids, like you so blessed. And I'm like, yes, I am. And and I just stopped there, and I was like, you're right. Like I have had five healthy kids. And my kids are healthy. Mama was healthy. And then she starts talking to me. She starts, she start, not ministering to me. She starts sharing. Well, I have three, but I had four. So she's, she's opening up her heart to me. And she, she just is, is telling me her testimony. And she said, you know, just that the one of her kids died at five months old. And, you know, and I, I just stopped there. And at this point, at this point, Father's got my attention. It, if I got to go three weeks without internet to love on this woman in the Philippines, okay, okay. And again, it's it's not. It's just staying intentional. I could have I could have stayed about the business, or I could have stopped to to love on this lady. It was so powerful, y'all. She so it, we go on and on. She starts crying, and she starts weeping. She says, "I'm." She said, "I'm so sorry. I don't know. I'm overwhelmed." emotion I can't even talk right now and I, again I'm like Lord I hear you like okay the internet yeah we need it I'm not negating the fact but when we have situations happening people the people are the most important the people are the most important the way we treat people and the way we interact with people it don't matter if your internet's been out for three weeks you need to be an example of Jesus to the people no excuses that's what I teach my kids we ain't got excuses we got opportunities but do you see that I could have I could have just stayed in my own bubble like ma'am I need my internet fixed I don't care you crying I don't care that no I, I, I knew that God was moving in that moment and even she said, she said, ma'am, I know there's a reason I'm talking to you right now. And then she's, testi she's testifying to me. She said, do you know I felt Jesus because I had, I had cancer and we didn't have the money to go to the doctors. And I asked, I asked God for a miracle. And my Jesus, she's calling Jesus, not some other God. She said, my Jesus healed me and I've been cancer free. Holy yeah. Ghost of God. Holy Ghost. Her name is Elena. Her name is Elena. And again, she she was touched. She was moved. And just when, when she said, I, 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 she said, I'm sorry, Miss Scott. I don't know why I, I, I move with emotion and I can hardly talk. And I just was saying to her, our Jesus knew. He even used my broke internet that we could talk and testify about him. I went in, and Vanessa's hearing all this. But after the phone call, I said, girl, if we got to be without internet for another week, that's fine. That was a divine moment. So please be encouraged. I'm not saying stuff ain't hard and we got to overcome some things. But let's find our God in it. And let's be a light. No excuses when stuff's happening that we don't represent him well because what does our pastor teach when when situations happen and, and we are squeezed and stuff comes out may we be squeezed and exude him amen, amen. so I, I let, let's lift up elena to you father right now we thank you for her god we thank you father for even use my broke internet lord to get to minister and love on another sister we pray for her we pray for her church god we pray for wherever she is that she will stay encouraged in the name of jesus and we thank you right now for her life and thank you for that phone call god as our pastor teaches us if it causes us to pray it's a good thing thank you god I pray over our body right now, right now in the name of Jesus. Every situation, every circumstance that looks just, and, it, and it's difficult, God, may we see you in it. And may we shine bright, Lord, no matter what, God. May when we are squeezed and stuff happens, may you come forth. And may 
creation see the sons and daughters arise? How are you so happy, church? How are you so happy? Because we got Jesus no matter what. Yeah, Internet's been out for two weeks. And, and help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, Jesus, represent you well in these last days, God, to bring hope to the hopeless, oh God. Thank you, God. I thank you for this body. I thank you for everyone here, Lord. I thank you for every marriage, every child, God. I thank you for the worship team. I thank you for the children, Lord. We thank you for Malachi Project, God. We thank you for this nation and the nations abroad, Lord. May we shine bright this week. And Father, those times that we have missed the mark, dropped the ball, and not represented you well, we thank you for your forgiveness, and we repent quickly. And Father, give us another opportunity to make it right, to make it right so we're not going to beat ourselves up. If we missed it and we missed our opportunity, we're asking, give us another chance to make it right, to be a light to shine. So we thank you for breaking off all condemnation, all shame and guilt when we miss the mark. And we thank you for another opportunity to make it right. In the name of Jesus, amen.